What's up, everybody? This is the Man of Steel, Mike Verna, and you are listening to the Three Count Podcast. I knew that she raised one. I All of your hate I won't change none. I Who you think you are? Welcome, everybody, to another fine edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, and, uh, you know, riding solo once again because, you know, Free help is free help. You know, sometimes they come, sometimes they go. It is what it is. But this is the Three Count Presents Now Entering ring, ring, which means one thing, we have a special guest for you. So we have to be honest. This is kind of like the first time that we've ever had one of these happen. So I am very much in surprise. So let's give it up for Alex Asensa. And who is he? You might ask, well, he owns this promotion up and coming, has a lot of great wrestlers on their roster, Invictus Pro Wrestling. You guys can catch them on YouTube. They're based out of New York, and their next show is actually November 7th. So you guys get a quick turnaround because we're actually filming this November 3rd. So welcome to the set, Mr. Alex Asenta. Thank you. Happy to be here. Asenta. I see. I, I messed it up, man. This is why I knew it was going to happen. Anyway. <laughs> no worries. No worries at all. So, Mr. Alex, man, it's a pleasure to have you on our show. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm excited to talk about my baby. <laughs> it's funny, though, because, like, the way we got introduced, though, was through a mutual friend. That's what uh, kind of started this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Peterson. Yep. It was cool. And I, I didn't. I just saw the, I saw the post go out, and then I saw our name get dropped and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, so. was it, wait, was it Ryan Peterson or was it a Ben, Ben Bishop? Big, big, yeah, it, was, ben it, was, Bishop. it was Ben Bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. So it was cool to see, see uh, you know, that was actually our first guest on our show. So <laughs> we were, uh, yeah, it's funny. We, we were trying to bring him in for the next show, um, but we were originally supposed to run end of October. And uh, when we switched to November 7th, I, uh, I hit him up and I said, hey, can you make the new date? And he's like, I'm actually getting married that day. So congratulations, Ben, if you're listening. Um, I know I already told you congratulations when you told me that, but congratulations again. Yeah, it was funny because I remember uh, when he came and told me, he's like, yeah, I'm engaged. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then he told us, he's like, yeah, I'm getting married. I was like, oh, okay. When? What? What? <laughs> it's like, man, it's crazy. During a probably, pandemic? <laughs> probably going to be a nightmare at the uh, tuxedo rental place for him. Oh man, you can imagine. <laughs> You're six tall. foot 12, 50% yeah. of a metric ton. Yeah. <laughs> He's such a great dude. But more importantly, as much as we love Ben, let's get into talking about you and your baby, as you mentioned. So tell us, what is Invictus Pro Wrestling? Uh, Invictus Pro Wrestling is. We are trying to be the, the the new face of indie wrestling here in the Northeast. And I know that's a big claim. We're obviously, this is a very, you know, uh, saturated territory. We got so many great promotions, so much great talent um, up here in this, in this region. But uh, I am, uh, you know, very confident. I got a great team of passionate individuals working with me. Like we, as you said, we got a great roster of talent. So, uh, you know, I firmly believe in our vision here and, um, it, it's kind of funny, you know, when I was first filing the paperwork, you know, sort of setting the wheels in motion for this thing uh, back last July, um, you know, I, I picked the name Invictus. Invictus means unconquered in Latin. And I picked it because I just thought it sounded cool. Um, but, uh, um, you know, over the last year with so many hurdles that we've had to overcome, you know, for example, the, the pandemic and, you know, venue changes and, uh, having to, you know, overcome all these obstacles, uh, that name Invictus has really come to, to represent a lot more than, you know, just a name. It's really come to represent our, uh, our mentality and, um, and our approach to the business. Yeah. I feel like if it's one thing that I've heard, uh, just kind of going back and forth was that like this, this pandemic, like just leveled everybody and it set the playing field, like even so like people who are like, quick to bounce back and kind of get the head start. But ultimately like all promotions are on the same level. So whether you're something giant like the WWE and you're like putting out content like all the time, or you're an up and comer, you know, such as Invictus or even uh, C3W coming out of DC, like you're on the same playing field. So it's like, it's crazy to think like that. That's, that's a thing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, on the one hand, it's nice because uh, you know, it, the environment is a little bit more forgiving 
like obviously, you know, uh, if you mess up here or there, people are, are, are more willing to, you know, kind of work with you and, and roll with the punches because obviously this is uncharted territory for all of us. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. So we talked about like, you know, you guys are up and coming, you're filing the paperwork. So talk to me about like, what was the hardest part about getting this promotion off the ground other than the pandemic? Cause that's like obviously its own beast and we can talk about that too. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the funny thing is uh, that we ran our last show in New Jersey and our show on, on the Saturday is going to be in New Jersey. But uh, as you said at the beginning, we're actually based in New York and originally we were supposed to be running our shows in New York. Um, so I went through all the paperwork, all the hoops and ladders because uh, New York is one of the most uh, heavily regulated states in terms of pro wrestling in the country. So I had to file a bunch of paperwork, you know, uh, file, you know, shorty bonds, uh, get all this paperwork done and we're all set. I believe June 20th of this year was going to be our, our debut uh, over in Westchester County. Um, and, uh, you know, then obviously the pandemic happened. So it was a little bit frustrating because I put all this work into, you know, running in New York. Um, but during that sort of uh, that lull during like the spring and, and into the summer when, uh, you know, uh, things were very much still uncertain and the lockdown was still in its, its earlier stages. Um, we were able to kind of reevaluate and, and, and sort of figure out, you know, what the best course of action was. And uh, as, you know, wrestling sort of slowly started to, to creep back into Jersey, um, I saw our opening and, and, and we ran with it. That, I mean, that's what's, that's what's crazy about like, um, even like here, like down in Maryland, right? Like we still can't run a show yet so a lot of stuff that we've been doing is just like going to west virginia <laughs> like there's wrestling yeah. so to be able to like to adjust on the fly like that's what helps get gets like you you know you ahead of your competition essentially i guess is where i'm kind of going with that and it's definitely cool that you were able to make that adjustment on the fly so you know big ups to you guys for doing that thank you so what okay so when the pandemic hits right and you guys obviously had that huge setback, you know, like you had to change, you know, like you were saying, you were altering the mind change or you're altering your game plan. What was the, what was the biggest hurdle to overcome other than like, obviously New York state athletic commission? Well, you know, safety is the, the number one um, priority, obviously uh, during this pandemic, it's about, you know, putting the, uh, not only the fans at ease, you know, the people who are going to be filling the seats and paying their money to be there, but also the, the talent. You know, uh, the main reason I had been in touch with the State Athletic Commission up in New York, but the main reason that, uh, you know, that they were so reluctant to start allowing any kind of, uh, well, particularly wrestling was that, you know, it's about as close contact as you can get, uh, you know, so in terms of the transmission of the, the virus, there was very high risk. Um, but uh, I believe it was uh, GCW, which is one of my favorite indie promotions, uh, running right now um, they were sort of the first ones that put out uh, you know they, they sort of took a pulse check and they said hey if we were to start running shows again now that the weather's getting nicer um, and we could start doing it outdoors you know what are the measures that you'd like to see in place and people responded in full um, you know and then that sort of what was what became our, our, our safety plan um, mass required for entry uh, socially distant seating was something that we had to kind of figure out you know how do you uh, um, you know, instead of the traditional rows, we have to do like clusters now, which is weird. It feels, it doesn't feel natural, but it's again, kind of just one of many adaptations that we have to, to make, to make everyone feel comfortable. So I think, um, actually being able to do it safely, uh, was the biggest hurdle then that we had to overcome. Yeah. I feel like I noticed that a lot too, with like AEW and Daly's Place is that they have, they have the bubbles, you know, where like you see like... Yeah five or six chairs together and like rows like three and four, but then like eight and nine up above, there might be only like two or three. So yeah, I definitely understand. It definitely does look awkward. Um, yeah, especially, and that's the other thing, you know, you're, 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 you get so worried about, you know, it's our first show. We want it to look good. We want it to look good on camera, but uh, you know, it's um, in a way, you know, you have to think about it. Like we're, we're part of history right now, you know, fans will look back at this 10 years from now and they'll say, Oh, this must've been during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> this was the pandemic era wrestling yeah That's, but 
but you know what? And then in, in the end, like you're gonna have fans that are gonna be loyal because they're gonna be like, you look like this was a this was a promotion that looked out for us when you know when wrestling wasn't seen as like viable at the point, but they were like, we're gonna run safely and we gotta help you guys get through it. So definitely, man, like it, like you said, safety is always first, and it's very cool that you guys take into account what you guys' as fans are saying. Yeah, um, and you know we. Uh, that's the thing that's kept us going. And, uh, you know, we didn't know if we were going to do a second show, honestly. Uh, we wanted to just get get over the hurdle of the first one. But uh, we got so many nice messages uh, from fans and talent alike, uh, you know, just, just thanking us for, uh, you know, making the effort and trying to give them, you know, a little dose of normalcy uh, during this whole time. And, um, and that was what really, you know, inspired us to keep it going for as long as we can. Bet. And then you guys had, like, have had some great talent to come through and obviously have like some great wrestling, as we mentioned, you know, before we were talking, but Mike Verna was on your guys' show. I saw the step, the stepfathers I've seen, uh, you guys have the, um, the outdoorsman coming up on yes. November 7th. So I'm definitely excited to see those guys. Um, yeah, it's very cool to see like all the talent that you guys are able to pull in. Ace Austin is you guys is part of guys is headliner against the Greek God. Um, yeah. So you guys have like some, some great talent, like, I guess, like, what was your guys' um, precautions going into with the tapings as far as, like, getting roster, like, guys on the roster? And how do you guys make sure that the roster stays safe as well going into, like, before each match and even going into the shows? Well, you know, I think it's all about, um, you know, we're fortunate enough that the, the guys that I had booked for the first show were all, you know, people that I either, you know, knew personally or I had kind of gotten a chance to know um, in between when, you know, I had initially reached out to them or vice versa. Um, so, you know, really my main concern was I wanted to, you know, foster a locker room uh, community uh, that wasn't toxic, you know, especially with the speaking out movement uh, that, that also came to light during this pandemic. You know, you hear a lot about uh, wrestling locker rooms, you know, not being the most savory environments. Um, but I wanted to really, you know, make sure that we had a, a locker room that was built on respect and, part of that respect is, you know, uh, respecting each other's wishes in terms of, you know, personal uh, or social distance and mask wearing and, and things of that sort. Um, so really, you know, I, I think all the talent will say that the, the locker room atmosphere was one of, of respect. And, you know, they also had that importance on uh, safety. Fortunately, um, our, our locker room at the last show was also outdoors. So plenty of ventilation, plenty of room to um, spread apart uh, in the back. Um, so, and yeah, of course, you know, obviously, uh, we, we did have a few wrestlers, um, who were booked initially and, and pulled out because, uh, they felt uncomfortable, um, with given the, you know, the circumstances, which, you know, what, you, you can't fault them for that, uh, you know, and the conversations that I had with these individuals was very much, you know, concerned about, you know, uh, ill will. Um, happening as a result of that or, you know, not, not, not being booked for future opportunities. So again, it just boils down to, you know, mutual respect. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's something too, I know like um, I, I, I'm, I'm a worker as well and I've had to pull out of certain shows because like either the area was starting to get too hot and my, my daughter who's high risk, like I had to look out for her. And so I just reached back out to promoters and just said, Hey, like, I'm sorry, but this is the reasons why. And then, like you said, mutual respect. Like, as long as you're able to communicate and have a have a, a good understanding, like, things will happen. And I'm still booked to be with them at a future date. So, like, it, yeah. it all comes down to it. Um, one of my big questions for you, right, is as a, as a promoter, as a founder of um, Invictus, like, what advice would you give to up-and-coming wrestlers for your promotion? That's a good question. Um... I mean, what I would say is uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease uh, would be the first one. Um, you know, I get uh, one of the, you know, most unexpected things uh, for me when, you know, we, we got the, this promotion up off the ground was, you know, how many uh, my inbox would be flooded with, you know, all these workers reaching out to me uh, trying to get booked. So uh, what I would say is, and, you know, like I said, we're, we're a new promotion. We're a small promotion. I can only imagine what some of the bigger, more established, you know, feds, what their inboxes look like. Um, so what I would say is, you know, uh, you really need to reflect on, you know, your brand and uh, how to differentiate yourself from the rest of that, uh, from the rest of that pile. You know, you really need to be in touch with your character. Um, 
and you really need to just find ways to, to make yourself stand out and be unique. Um, and wrestling is, is funny. It's very unpredictable and it's very hard to tell what kinds of, you know, small things will end up getting over, um, you know, but uh, for up and coming workers, I would say, you know, uh, trial and error and don't get discouraged. Don't give up on yourself and just keep going, keep applying your craft until you've, you've, you've found what clicks and you've found what works for you. That's, that's great advice. I feel like with all the advice that we're getting, like someone to come through and say, like, learn to market yourself. I feel like that's perfect because I feel like that's the first time I've heard that like period. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's really true. And uh, you know what? And every time you, uh, you get a booking, you know, you, you milk that booking, you try to get as much out of it as you can, you know, you network, make sure that you're talking to everyone in the locker room, make sure that you're soliciting feedback uh, from the promoter. Um, you know, I had a couple of the newer guys at the last show, uh, you know, come up to me when they come back through the curtain and, you know, ask, you know, what, what, what they like, what they could have done better. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm taking mental notes of that. I'm, I'm taking mental notes of the people that want to grow and aren't just resting on their laurels. Right. Oh, that's awesome though, man. And that's, that's what I've heard is like promoters will always remember the ones that come back and talk to you mm -hmm. and, uh, and discuss things with you. So definitely that's, that's great advice. Um, so I want to know, like here, like I know we've talked about like the like the the hardest part, but what's the best part about running a promotion? <laughs> oh man, um, you know, for me, I'm. Well, I think that it really ties back to me for the reason why I got into this in the first place, which was, you know, I was always I was always a wrestling fan, but I was always very interested in the storytelling component of wrestling. Um, I'm, you know, was always a very creative kid growing up uh, i'm actually in uh, graduate school pursuing my mfa in creative writing right now um so the the storytelling component of wrestling was always what i was into and i was never an athletic kid uh, i have like a month of peewee soccer under my belt and that's it so like i knew from an early age that i was never going to be a wrestler but um that still didn't stop me from you know going through and you know like having whole notebooks full of like fantasy booking and things like that so um actually being able to uh you know, sort of sit down in the, in the pilot seat as it were, and, and kind of figure out, you know, how to put a show together. And, uh, um, you know, just, it was, it was really exciting for me to sort of see something that had only ever existed in my imagination uh, coming to reality. And then just the support and uh, just how cool everyone has been. I've met since, you know, a year ago, when I, over a year ago, when I first started, you know, putting this thing together, I've met so many awesome people, uh, you know, from people in the backstage, uh, fans, workers, um, things like that. And everyone's just been so supportive because at the end of the day, we're all, we're all just fans. And uh, we all want to see, you know, the business succeed and we want to see a new promotion succeed. And um, yeah, I mean, just the, the reaction of, of the, the crowd was great. You know, I was, I was kind of pleasantly surprised because, uh, you know, when we're selling tickets and we're promoting the event, I didn't really know what the turnout was going to be. And I didn't know what kinds of fans would show up. And I was pleasantly surprised actually that it, it ended up being a more like the wrestlers were asking me, Oh, is this going to be like a family show? Or is this like a, and I was like, do you know what? I don't know. It's going to, it's going to be what it's going to be. So I said, why don't we just err on the side of caution there? But it ended up being a lot of uh, families with kids. And uh, you know what? Those, those shows are fun, man. Uh, like the, and the wrestlers, you know, you, you, you can see it in their faces. They, they really like performing in front of, cause the, for the kids, it's real, you know, uh, and they, they, a lot of them told me, you know, they, they much prefer, you know, performing in front of that kind of crowd than, you know, a bunch of hardcore fans who are going to just sit there and pick everything apart. Um, you know, children are, you know, they have this sort of pure soul. They just sort of accept things um, and they're happy for whatever, whatever you give them. So uh, the, the atmosphere just was really positive in our first show. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to repeating that uh, this coming weekend. Yeah, I have to say, it was something, uh, even speaking with Mike about, that was, like, the one thing he talked about was, you know, like, that wrestling in front of kids and, like, that persona, because, like, you know, he's a giant superhero, and, like, yeah. at the end of the day, like, when you're wrestling, that's what you are. You're a giant superhero to these kids, and that's why I like, too, like, when I'm in front of in front of kids and I get to, like, interact with them and stuff, and they're like, hey, what's going on? Like, and, you know, yeah. it's, like, it's one of the best things ever, so I have to agree, man, it's, and it's funny, because, like, you, you said it, and it 
the way you the way you drew it out right kind of remind me of that scene on uh finding neverland with you know johnny depp where like he purposely puts kids in certain seats because he knows yeah, yeah, yeah. laughing everybody else will get it so that's why i was like oh that's good i like that <laughs> But man, I just want to, I guess for me, the last thing that I really just kind of want to ask before we jump into like our 10 10 count questions, man, is like, what are like some of the key things, I guess, when wrestlers like show up to you, what do you, what do you look for to be like, okay, I want to bring that guy back or, you know, maybe, maybe at a future date at some point, we'll probably bring that guy back. Uh, Yeah. Um, So, I mean, for me, there's sort of like three uh, sort of like criteria or categories that I would look at um, for in terms of potential, you know, workers. Um, First thing would be, uh, you know, the look. Um, That doesn't necessarily mean they have to be, you know, chiseled all the heck. You know, that just means that you need to have a look. You need to have a look that's memorable, Uh, whether that's, you know, from your gear or, you know, your physique, uh, just things like that. So look is one. Um, Obviously their in-ring ability, need to make sure that they can go in the ring. Um, And then the last one, of course, is charisma. Uh, Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm looking for somebody that excels in all three. Um, If they excel in one of those areas, um, that's great. If I feel like they have potential, maybe, in some of the other areas, um, that's fine. So it's almost like I have this vision of when I'm looking at, like, you know, all these workers, I'm almost seeing, like, a pie chart in my head <laughs> like, you know like how would i like you know what would their breakdown look like you know um but uh that's that's part of it for me and it's also a part of it is um you know like uh uh in terms of how the card's coming together first of all because the way it almost always looks is you know we'll be uh, you know a month or two out and we have um We'll have like, uh, you know, the card looks like there's a name here, a name here, there, but there's blanks uh, that you have to fill in and things like that. So I'm looking for, you know, all right, uh, well, you know, stylistically, who would who would put on a good match with this guy uh, based on you know, his strengths and weaknesses are um, and things like that. Sorry about that. Family. Trust me. Trust me. Because at the same time that they were coming in, my door had opened up and my daughter was coming in just to ask if she could have dessert. Happens all the time. Trust me. I'm well aware of what could happen. All right, man. Well, that's my last question. My last big question for you, man. So we got to jump into the best segment of this show, right? So the best segment is called the 10 count questions, or as like we'd like to say, the three count. 10 count questions. Here's how it works. We're going to fire off a bunch of questions at you, man. Um, in fact, 10 questions. So first thought that comes to your mind and we're going to put on imaginary, imaginary timer. Bing! There it is. So let us begin. WCW or WWF? Oof. WWF. Smackdown or Raw? Currently? Sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Holistically, I'm gonna have to go with Raw. Okay. Friday night, what are you doing? Friday night, uh, watching New Japan, probably. Okay. Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels? Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels? Um, Gonna have to go with Bret Hart. Favorite candy? Reese's. That's right. Number one pick. That's that's only thing I can be picked. Um, favorite podcast? Oh, I'm gonna have to go with three count, of course. Of course. It's like we don't even clue that in. It just happens naturally. I know. I'm saying <laughs> with my brother. Marvel or DC? Oof. Um, Marvel's been killing it with the cinematic universe. I gotta say. We can talk more about that after the show. Um, Austin or Rock? Austin. <laughs> you just have like, you're just like, oh, I know I want to say this. All right. So nominate one person that you would want to see on this podcast. Oof. Um, I'm going to have to go with, uh, just because I know that he's such a great talker and he's got a lot to say, I'm going to have to go with my boy GGP. Got okay. Papadon. Definitely. I definitely am going to reach out. Um, and last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person that comes on this show. Favorite curse word? 
favorite curse word. Am I allowed to curse? This you are allowed to curse. Are you listening? Um, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, because of all the little last minute snafus that we run into, uh, you know, when it comes to running shows and everything that goes wrong, uh, good F bomb. Good, <laughs> great F bomb is all. Gets the always job, always and, you know. Yes. Instant stress relief. <laughs> we talk about it all the time on our uh, on our debate show. But we talk about like the it's like it's like the one word that literally can be everything. <laughs> Love that word. The all right. So. <laughs> it could be every word in the sentence. That's how great of a word it is. So yes. that's it for the ten count questions, man. So let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. Yeah, man. Uh, Invictus Pro Wrestling. You can check us out on all our social medias. Uh, Twitter, we're at Invictus Pro W R E one. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Insta, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram uh, was just Invictus Pro Wrestling. We got our show coming up uh, this Saturday, November seventh. November Rain, headlined by Impact's Ace Austin versus the Greek God Papa Don. Uh, that's going to be at the Next Level Arena, Flemington, New Jersey. Doors at one. Bell at two. Uh, tickets are on Eventbrite. You can find the link on all our socials, and we hope to see you all there. Bet. That's where it's at. I'm not going to lie. I'm super excited. I'm definitely going to have to catch up with all of the wrestling that you guys have been putting out because, you know, it's it's just great to see new promotions start up, and I like, I like watching and help promoting. So that is it. I'm the host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. This is the Three Count Presents Now Entering Ring, Alex Aceta Slash. Invictus Pro Wrestling. So, guys, check out the newest episodes um, here on YouTube as well as Anger.fm and check out our next episode. So be there or be somewhere else. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to Twitter.com, right? Go over there. Find us at the three count underscore pod. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the three count pod. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to YouTube.com. Give subscribe. Turn the bell on. Turn on notifications. Leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. Oh, at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So. Show us some support, please.